Hey guys, Colin here with Main Street Wolf, and in this video we're talking about investing, merging with TikTok. I know, pretty random, but I've been hitting it hard on TikTok lately, and I've been coming out with a lot of good content related to investing, and instead of recreating that on YouTube, I decided I'm going to start putting them in some compilations. So in this compilation, we're going to be talking about investing basics, basically how to get started, and this is part one, so enjoy. So I often get the question, how much money do I need to start investing? Nowadays it can be as little as 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 10,000. It doesn't really matter. What matters is starting and building that habit of consistently investing. By consistently investing, you're essentially applying the strategy known as dollar cost averaging, meaning that on a weekly or monthly basis, you're investing the same amount of money and you're stripping out the element of timing the market. What's nice about this strategy is allows you to mentally disengage from the ups and downs of the market and allows you to take advantage of the long-term trend of the stock market going up. What is stock? So a stock is a type of investment that represents an ownership share in a company. So to better explain this to everyone, let's take an example like McDonald's. So you go there and you buy uh, burgers, fries, their delicious chicken nuggets, but how do you actually own uh, McDonald's without buying like a whole, a whole franchise, right? Well, you can do that by going to an exchange and buying it off the stock market. So there's a certain amount of shares that companies basically sell in order to raise money. And when you buy those shares, you own a piece of that company. So for example, McDonald's is at 220 right now. You can see over time on this chart, it has gone up. So there's two ways to make money. It's either through price appreciation, that stock price going up, or dividends that are payments to the shareholders. Here's a table of all the dividends that McDonald's has paid. You can see uh, last one was $1.16 for each share. Hope you learned something. Have you ever looked at a stock and noticed this bid and ask and wondered what the hell that is? That, my friend, is called the bid-ask spread. Throughout the trading day, the price of the stock constantly fluctuates up and down. And that's based on a buyer and a seller coming together and saying, hey, let's trade at this specific price. There's also this thing called an order book, which actually collects all the bids and asks that are currently out there in limit orders. Think of a bid as someone trying to buy at a certain price and an ask as someone trying to sell at a certain price. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say a stock is trading at $100 and I'm someone that wants to buy the stock, but $100 is a little pricey, so I wanna buy it at $99.50. I would put in a limit order for $99.50 and see if someone's willing to sell at that price. On the other side, there's someone trying to sell, and let's say they want to sell at 150 cents because they want higher than $100. Well, that's the ask. So as market orders come in, they either hit the ask or hit the bid. This is the price discovery. In a previous video, I talked about the bid-ask spread. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the order book that I mentioned in that video. To illustrate my point, I'm looking at coinbasepro.com and the order book for Bitcoin. So over here, you can see that there's all the asks that are currently out there and all the bids. So as people are buying and selling Bitcoin, you can see that the bids and asks are constantly changing and the difference between the bid and the ask is the spread. And the spread, the less it is, the more liquid that underlying is considered. And this is all applicable to stocks as well. And over here, you can see a chart that visualizes all of those bids and asks. So the asks are in the red and the bids are in the green. And what this tells you, if you see a large spike at a certain price, it can either show you resistance um, for the S side or support on the bid side. Hope this helped and you learned a little bit about order books. And if you did and you are interested in following investing information, please consider following. Investing tip. So you don't always want to chase the highest yielding stocks. So what I mean by that is you don't want to pick stocks that have a really high dividend rate only because they have a really high dividend rate. A perfect example of this is Orchid Island Capital. It's a real estate investment fund that yields a 17.24% uh, dividend rate. That's right, 17.24. But Colin, that's 17.24% yield. That's free money, baby. Although they do have a high dividend rate, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe in the future or that it's a good investment. If you take a look at the yearly chart, you can see that it started at about 7 and it's at 565. So if you calculate a rate of return, that's about minus 
So you got 17% for the dividend, but you lost 20% on the investment. Net net, you're down on the position. Another item you should be looking at is payout ratio. If that's over 100, the company may cut the dividend in the future. What exactly are index funds? In this video, we're going to cover what an index fund is and an example of an index fund. The definition of an index fund is a type of mutual fund with a portfolio constructed to match or track the components of a financial market index. Now, you may have heard of the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, or the Russell 2000. Those are all different indexes. Then you have ETFs like the SPY, which is an exchange traded fund which tries to match the performance of the S&P 500. When you buy an ETF like SPY, you're buying a portion of all the companies within that index. This allows you to get exposure to all different kinds of sectors, giving you great diversification, and it gives you exposure to the total market. You even get a yield with the SPY. So the 175 yield is actually paid out because all of these companies that make up the index there's a different yield for all the companies, so the average is 1.75. And with ETFs like this, the expense ratio is peanuts. It's only 0.09%. That's way better than some mutual funds that charge up to 2%. When it comes to investing, most people know that when you buy a share in a company and that company does well over time, that those shares appreciate and you make money on the way up. But there's also ways to make money when a stock goes down. One of the ways to make money when a stock goes down is by short selling or shorting. If we take a look at a company like U.S. Steel, at the beginning of 2019, they trade around $22, and nowadays they're trading at $10.50. So if you shorted, let's say at $20.50, and then bought back those shares that you shorted for $10.50, you'd be able to profit $10 with every share that you shorted. So let's walk through exactly how it works. First, you have to have a brokerage account, and then you also have to have an account that allows you to short stocks. Let's say you're shorting company X, and it's trading at $20 per share. You go to your broker and say, hey, I want to borrow 100 shares and sell those. Then, let's say the stock goes down $5 and is trading at $15. You buy back 100 shares and you give it back to your broker. You get to keep the $5 per profit per share or $500. Let's talk about bonds. What exactly is a bond and how it plays a role in your overall investing portfolio? There's two parties when it comes to bonds. There's the lender and then the person that's receiving the money from the actual loan. Issuer of bonds can be anyone from the government to corporations that are trying to raise money. But the lender isn't just some nice guy that's giving out money. They want something in return, aka some cash. Bonds are also known as fixed income, meaning at the beginning of the bond, you already know what you're gonna receive as the lender and what you're gonna pay as the borrower. Let's go over some important characteristics of bonds. Face value is what the bond will be worth at the end of the maturity. You can think of the coupon rate as the interest rate that you're collecting as the lender. Coupon dates is how often the payments are actually made on the bond. The maturity date pretty much sets how long the bond will last. The higher the coupon rate is, means that the bond itself is riskier. Lower coupon rates are considered safer. The rate is influenced by a variety of factors such as credit quality and expiration of the bond. If you want to lower your taxes, being a long-term investor is actually more beneficial than being a short-term trader. If you're in and out of stocks quickly, that means that you're taxed at your ordinary tax rate, whereas if you hold long-term, you're taxed at the long-term capital gains rate, which is lower. When it comes to bad news, you think bad news always means the stock price is going to go down. Well, you're wrong. Large companies can end up paying billions of dollars in fines and settlements, and the stock price will still go up. A real example of this is back in July when Facebook settled for $5 billion with the FTC, and the stock went up 2% that day. You may be asking, if they're paying out $5 billion, why would the stock go up? It's because $5 billion is nothing to Facebook. It's literally a drop in the bucket. Also, it clears the uncertainty in the air, which investors hate. They hate uncertainty, and now that they know a certain amount, they can say, oh, who cares about $5 billion because Facebook has a ton of cash and they make billions and billions of dollars every quarter. What's kind of messed up is these larger corporations can do something that they know is wrong and make billions of dollars and profit off of it and then later kind of just pay it off with a simple settlement. But hey, that's how the system works. And don't hate the player, hate the game, right? Hope you guys enjoyed that compilation. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks guys and have a great day.